Hi, this is Tony Henderson Mayers, and I want to thank you for tuning in to Moments of Inspiration, Encouragement, and Prayer. And I know you may be thinking, well, you talk about romantic relationships. Yes, but I also talk about family, friendship, business relationships, relationships with yourself, God, and your money. And this series, Moments of Inspiration and Prayer, um, helps us to get a better relationship with God. And so I hope you enjoyed this portion of my Tony Henderson Mayers page. And without further ado, here is moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer. Welcome each and every one of you. This is Tony Henderson Mayers of Moments of Inspiration, Encouragement, and Prayer, where we come together to talk about uh, the Bible, to read the Bible, to share, uh, to pray over your concerns, and to give you encouragement as you go out of the door. I want to um, thank all of those who are watching me via Twitter, Periscope, Facebook, all of that. Um, let's see, did I say Periscope? Twitter. Uh, YouTube, and all of the various platforms that you're watching me, especially if you're watching me via my website, which is www.wisecourtship.com. Thank you, Judy. And also, um, if you are listening to me via podcast, which is the Wise Courtship Devotional, and you can listen to me on iTunes, um, Apple, any place you get your, any, any place you get your podcast, you can check me out. All righty then, we are going to talk about on today, um, who is in control. We're going to talk about that on today. Um, that is our subject, and I'm so excited to, uh, to go over that with you, who is really in control. So let's turn to Psalm, Tom, Psalm 9, Psalm 9, okay? We're going to do that on today. And listen, while you are turning to that, I was saying, this is why you saw this coming across the bottom of your screen, we are going to be doing something a little different with moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer. So excited about that. We're giving you an opportunity to participate along with me. So if you want to get more information about that, email me right down there. See that? Info, I-N-F-O at wisecourtship.com. That's I-N-F-O at wisecourtship.com. And just put, be a guest, and um, you will get the information, Okay. All righty, let's go ahead and read Psalm 9. Let's do that, if you don't mind, ma'ams and sirs. And of course, I'm going to be reading from the New International Version, okay? I will, starting at verse 1, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of your wonderful deeds. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O Most High. My enemies turn back. They stumbled and perished before you, for you have upheld my right and my cause. Sitting enthroned as the righteous judge, you have rebuked the nations and destroyed the wicked. You have blotted out their name forever and ever. Endless ruin has overtaken my enemies. You have uprooted their cities. Even the memory of them has perished. The Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He, he rules the world in righteousness. Excuse me, I'm getting distracted here. He rules the world in righteousness and judges the people with equity. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you. For you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Sing the praises of the Lord enthroned in Zion. Proclaim among the nations that what he has done. For he who avenges blood remembers. 
He does not ignore the cries of the afflicted. Lord, see how many enemies persecute me. Have mercy and lift me up from the gates of death, that I may declare your praises in the gates of daughter Zion, and there rejoice in your salvation. The nations have fallen into the pit they have dug. Their feet are caught in the net they have hidden. The Lord is known by his acts of justice. The wicked are ensnared by the work of their hands. The wicked go down to the realm of the dead. All the nations that forget God, but God will never forget the needy. The hope of the afflicted will never perish. Arise, Lord, do not let mortals triumph. Let the nations be judged in your presence. Strike them with terror, Lord. Let the nations know they are only mortal. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. That's some good stuff right there. That's some good reading right there. And so we're talking about who is really in control. You know, during this Thanksgiving season, we want to remember to give God thanks because he is the one that is the maker and creator of all things. He is the one that is in control. He is sovereign and he does all things well. He is the king of justice and righteousness. And one thing about God, he is not like man that is wishy-washy. One day they this way and one day they that way. Nobody wants to serve anyone who is like that. God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Whatever word he lays out will always remain the same. Praise, praising God is giving him adoration and, and complimenting him for um, who he is. But thanksgiving is giving God um, thanks for what he has done, recognizing what he has done. And we recognize God as a just God and a God who is always in control, whether you know it or not. You know, man, sometimes you give him a little bit of power and boy, they can get puffed up. You can tell people who have not are not used to power because they get puffed up quick, honey. They're really, they're ready to uh, reign over you and put your, their foot on your neck, okay? <laughs> they are ready to put their foot in your back. They're ready to smack around their cat, tell their mama off, and do all these kind of things that is uh, unseemly, okay? But a real leader, as the Bible has laid out, a real leader serves. Y'all didn't hear me on today. A real leader serves. And we see in this word that God serves and blesses. But he, listen, he's not a bellboy. He's still in control. He has a plan. He knows what's going on. And he listens to the cries of the afflicted. I want to just bring out a couple of things for you. Because as you are thanking God this Thanksgiving season. And let me just say, I know that there's a lot of things. I know there's a lot of things that have gone on in 2020, okay? And I know there's a lot of things that many of you are dealing with, okay? Some of y'all are fussing because you can't get out the house, but there's a lot of you dealing with relatives who are, are sick. Some have died from COVID-19. Some people are trying to hang on to their dear lives as we speak. Um, some people have really um, uh, lost so many loved ones and lost everything and fires. Not only did they have a fire maybe while they were staying out there in California, they lost a loved one to COVID-19 and then they lost their business and so much has happened to them. And so sometimes we just, we need to sit back and be ashamed that we've been complaining about old little itty bitty stuff. Like we can't get out. But instead, why can't we go ahead and give thanks to God? When you look at Psalm 9, it starts off and says, I will give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of your wonderful deeds. I think sometimes when the Lord has blessed us, we begin to forget about all that God has done in our lives. Oh my goodness. We can never, ever forget. We can never, ever forget all that God has done in our lives. And listen, you are not the only one going through what you're going through. No matter how horrible you believe it is, there's so many other people that are going through. Some things are, are, are just a way of life. 
Some things we bring upon ourselves. Some things can be rectified. Some things can be turned around. But whatever the situation is and whatever the circumstance, we are to always give God praise. And we should always find things that we can thank God for. <laughs> thank you so much, sis. It's so good to see you. So good to see you. And guys, if you are not checking out Effie, make sure you check her out and her broadcast because it is a ma amazing the Frame Your Day broadcast. So listen, let's look back at Psalm 9 because this scripture is just, it just speaks through the generations, even what we're going through on today. It talks about um, even on, I'm going to skip down, I'm going to skip through, okay? I'm not going to go through every every line in here. But he talks about here about God dealing with his enemies. Is anybody thankful that God dealt with your enemies? Anybody had an enemy? You know, sometimes when you when you when you have these enemies, they don't always think rationally. They just do things to hurt you. They strike out to hurt you. They come against you. But God cares enough to turn your enemies around. He turned. He, he cares enough about that. He says in verse three, "My enemies turn back. They stumble and perish before you, for you have upheld my right, my right, and my cause." sitting enthroned as the righteous judge. See, because we look, we search for uh uh we search for for truth and answers and all of that, but God is ultimately the righteous judge. He always does what is right. You're not gonna have to worry about going before him and have good to see you. Good to see you, um uh, Mr. Frizzle, good to see you. Good to see you, LaDonna. God will always stand up for what is right. He always will do what is right. You may not always get that in this lifetime because sometimes people administer justice with biases. We're still talking about Thanksgiving. We're talking about God is really in control. The topic is who is really in control and it's God. And seemingly sometimes it seems like everything is against you. It seems like everything is going to be tilted against you. Sometimes it seems like your health is going to fail. That's what everybody else is saying. And you feel like everybody else is speaking that. And you wonder if God is listening to your prayers or hearing your prayers. Sometimes everybody's back can be against you. It could seem like the judge is about to let down the gavel against you. But God has the final word. I wish I had somebody in here who can attest to that, that God has the final, final word. He is the one that is really in control. Let me put that up there again. Who is really in control? I believe God is really in control. So we're coming out of Psalm 9, guys. So go ahead and turn to that if you will. Listen, I want to skin down to uh, verse 6. Endless ruin has overtaken my enemies. You have uprooted their cities. Even the memory of them has perished. You know, there's a saying that we say in, in the African-American church that he may not come when you want him to, but he's always on time. And sometimes you may dream up things that you want to happen to your enemies, or you may pray and you may, you know, be praying for your enemies, but you sure wish they would stop. And you don't know if the Lord is going to come through, but I'm a witness today that God will come through. And the way that he comes through, sometimes you may end up begging the Lord. Oh, Lord, that seems like that's kind of harsh because God is watching. He is always on the side of the afflicted. If you're not sure <laughs> whose side he is on, I would, I will listen. I'm not a gambling woman, but if you want to figure out who side he's on, it says it right here. He's always on the side of the afflicted. Because he does care about what we are going through. Look, let's look, look at verse 7 of Psalm 9. The Lord reigns forever. He has established his throne for judgment. He rules the world in righteousness and judges the people with equity. Wow. We need some more of that in our justice system where we are ruling people and judging people with equity. But see, God knows the backstory. Sometimes when a person is doing something we particularly don't like, we don't like the fact that they're homosexual, or we don't like the fact that they're drinking, or we don't like the fact that they killed somebody, it's hard for us to judge with equity. Oh my goodness. We've got big sins and little sins, and we don't know the backstory all the time. 
of what's going on. But God knows the backstory. He knows our heart. He knows the situation. And he judges with equity. Anybody glad about that? Oh, my goodness. Look at, let's look at verse 9. The Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, a stronghold in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you, for you, Lord, have never forsaken those who seek you. Oh, my gosh. If you want help, just seek the Lord. You know, I've got a great mom. My father has gone on to glory. He's been deceased maybe 35 years. He was a man of God and he's resting with the Lord now. And I know I could go to him. I know I can go to my mother even now. I know that I could go to my husband now, but listen, they can't always be there. They are humans. They are mortals. But when you seek God out, you will always find him. Oh, you need to share off of that because somebody needs to hear that. When you seek God, you'll be always able to find him. And let's not confuse our list of wants with God's justice and God's wisdom and God's mercy. Because whatever God decides is always good. Oh, I know you thought that you should have him. I know you thought you should connect with her. I know you thought you should make you 50000 a year. But God knows what's best for you. He knows the plan he has for you. I always think about that example that Oprah gives when she says her and Gail used to say and when they were 20, if we make 20000 wow. And then when if we make 30 at 30000 and we make 40 at 40000 And if God had just listened to that prayer, Oprah would not be a billionaire. Oh my gosh, y'all not hearing me on today. Money is not that is not important. What I want you to see is the example of how God thinks bigger than you think. You may be thinking, I'm going to just do this in the ministry, but God is thinking bigger. You may say, I can only get this together for my children, but God is thinking bigger. You may say, well, you know what? I'm going to just try this little medicine right here, and we're going to see this and, and see if this helps, and I'm just going to make it through life. But God sees bigger. And we've got to know that God is the one that's really in control, not your doctor, not your professor, not even your mother or your father, not your pastor, but God is the one who's really in control. And during this Thanksgiving season, we need to give God thanks for his mercy, for his goodness, and for the fact that he's a righteous judge and that he is in control. We ought to thank God for that. If you've ever had a crazy ruler, You'll know how to get on your knees and thank God that he is stable, that he is just, that he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So let's skip down for a few more verses before we get into prayer. Let's look at verse 13. It says, Lord, see how my enemies perse persecute me. Have mercy and lift up from lift me up from the gates of death, that I may declare your praises in the gates of daughter Zion, and there rejoice in your salvation. There's going to be times that your enemy seems like they've got their foot on your neck. They got their knee on your neck. But you can ask God to deliver you. You can ask God to help you. And when he does, you ought to raise up and give God praise. You ought to give him thanks for what he has done. It was not your good looks that got you out of it. It was not your pedigree nor your degrees, but it was God and God's glory. He is the only one who deserves the glory, the honor, and the praise. Let me just read this. I've got to read this section because this section really spoke into what we're living even in this day. Look at verse 15. It says, the nations have fallen into the pit they have dug. Their feet are caught in the net they have hidden. The Lord is known by his acts of justice. The wicked go down to the realm of the dead. The wicked are ensnared by the works of their hands. The wicked go down to the realm of the dead. All the nations that forget God, but God will never forget the needy. Can I say that again? Somebody needs to hear that. God will never forget the needy. The hope of the afflicted will never perish. 
Arise, Lord, do not let mortals triumph. Let the nations be judged in your presence. Strike them with terror, Lord. Let the nations know they are only mortal. Oh my God, we can do a lot of things. We can do a whole lot of things. I'm telling you, we some creative people. Oh boy, the things that we can do, the things we can make, the technology that we develop, but we are only mortal. Somebody put that in chat box. We are only human. We are only mortal, but God can do anything but fail. And we can't get too smart. We can't get too wise. We can't get too puffed up because we can try to do what we want to. We can try to put one group of people down and try to reign over them. We can try to snub our nose at folk. We can try to make things hard, but you are only mortal. <laughs> That's human, y'all. You are only human. You know, there's a scripture that says that, um, um, why fear the person who can kill the body? You ought to fear. I'm just the Tony translation. You ought to fear the one who can kill the body and the soul. That's God, our father, honey. So I have no fear of man. What you should fear is God because God is the one that is in control. God is the one who allows the sun to rise and the sun to come out at night. God is the one who tells every animal their job and they do it uh, according to clockwork, whatever it is that God has assigned them to do. We're the only ones who get uh, stubborn and think we know so much. But I'm here to tell you, when you um, lay your head down and return to your ancestors, the world will still keep revolving. Why? Because God is the one that's in control. Yes, your little position is cute. That's nice. You ought to serve in that position. That's why God gave it to you. Yes, your house is cute. It's nice. You ought to bless somebody with that house. You ought to invite some people in and be hospitable. Yes, you got a nice car. You ought to pick up somebody and help them because whatever God gives you, you need to serve with that. Whatever talent God gave you, you ought to use it to give him glory because God is the one that's really and control. And this Thanksgiving season, we ought to give them all the glory, the honor, and the praise. So listen, beloved, we're going to go ahead on to pray, and then I'm going to give a, a, some words of encouragement, um, and then we're going to go out the door. But listen, I am doing a new format with my moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer. So I'm calling out all psalmists, all ministers, all people who give prophets, those who give words of encouragement, those who pray, read scriptures, you guys email me uh, at info at wisecourtship.com and just put be a guest in the subject line and I will give you more information. Please do that because as we go into the new year, I'm going to be developing this as God has told me to do. So I would love to include you. So go ahead and make sure you email me. So let's go before the Lord in prayer, shall we? Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless you. We honor you, God. We lift you up. We magnify you. We salute you. We bow down before you. We give you all honor because truly you are worthy of all of the praises. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. You do all things well. You are a good God. And beside you, there is none other. First of all, God, we ask for forgiveness for the things that we have done wrong the things that we've said wrong, the places we know we shouldn't have gone, the plans and the dreams and the aspirations you've given us, we've sat on. God, forgive us. Forgive us for not uh, treating one another right. Forgive us for having attitudes and, 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 and being difficult to work with. God, whatever it is. Somebody say whatever it is. God, forgive us for all of our many, many sins. You said if we would confess our sins, you would be faithful and just to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So God, we put everything before your feet, knowing that you will remember it no more and cleanse us, oh God. Father God, we thank you for life, health, and strength. We thank you, oh God, for bringing us from to this present state, to this present place, bringing us through this pandemic, oh God, through 2020 with all of its dips and, and valleys and, 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 and mountaintop experiences. God, we thank you uh, for being with us 
in in such a scary time for for many of us god we thank you for providing for us all through this pandemic god we just bless you on today god we just thank you for being so good to us you've been good better to us than we've been to ourselves blessing our mothers and our fathers and our sisters and and taking care of of um, our family near and far god we just love you anybody love god let me know what you're thanking god for God, we thank you, oh God, for keeping our mind in perfect peace as we keep our mind stayed on you. We know who we are. We can say our name. We can see. We can touch. We can smell. We thank you, oh God, for all of your blessings, for our children, for our spouses, for our friends. God, we thank you so much. Yes, for the material things, but most importantly, God, we thank you for who you are, for being a just God, for being a loving God, and for being in control. No better leader than we could ever have but you, God, and we love you. Anybody love God, let them know. We love you, God. We bless you, God. Somebody help me worship. We honor you, God, on today. We bless you each and every day. Because you are truly worthy to be praised. Now, if you have a prayer request, go ahead and put it up through the chat box at this time. God, we just pray. First of all, God, we pray for Judy um, and her son who's battling cancer at this moment, God, and about to go into treatment, God. We pray healing over his body. I know that you are healing, God. I know you can turn things around. When people think that it can't be done, I've seen you do it, God. And so I pray, oh God, healing over him in the name of Jesus. God, I pray for Judy, who's there by his side and who may be worried, oh God. We pray for her, um, that you would give her peace, oh God. God, we're still putting Mike Maldo uh, before you, oh God, you know what he stands in the need of. God, we pray for uh, Vincent Martin uh, who and his family who stand in the need of prayer. God, you know all about it. God, we pray for them at uh, this moment that you would cover them. Uh, put your loving arms all around them. God, we pray for every ministry leader on this broadcast. We pray for every business owner on this broadcast. We pray for every mother, every father. God, every uh, um, leader, God, we pray for all of the pastors um, and all those who bring the word, that teach the word and preach the word. We pray for them, God, in their respective places, their families, their homes, God. God, we pray for those who are even crying out to you now all around the world, those who are crying out to you. God, we touch and agree for them that you'll meet every need. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Those who are going hungry, those who are going without water, those who um, have no shelter, no place to stay, God. Those who are lonely, God, we pray for them. We pray for the Wise Courtship family as they listen to this on the Wise Courtship devotional. Those who have gotten the books, who met me at the conferences, those who see me on television, heard me on the radio, those who come on to the live streams, who um, come to the Zoom broadcasts and all of those things, seeking, oh God, your answers in the area of relationships. Some are hurting. Some need healing, God, and you know all about it. God, we pray for them in the name of Jesus. And now, God, we pray for those who... Uh, were too embarrassed to put their prayer requests up through the chat box. Possibly it was too private for them to share with anyone. God, we just know that whatever your answer is, whether it's yes, no, or wait a minute, it's going to be better than what we've ever expected. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody come on now. Let's say amen, amen, and amen. Well, darlings, I tell you, God is so good. He is so amazing. And, uh, you know, we've had a rough year. I mean, I think everybody's had something rough in 2020. Okay, if it was nothing but the pandemic, and that was enough. That was enough. Um, our elections, uh, some of us have lost. I know I've lost loved ones to COVID-19. Um, other sicknesses and illnesses and diseases. Many people lost their businesses and 
um, just, you know, can't uh, fellowship with the church members in person. And there's so much going on. Some people are even starving, hungry, don't have a place to stay. And it's just so much going on. Wars and w rumors of wars. But we knew these things would happen, didn't we? We knew these things would happen. Let's see. I'm just seeing this. I, that's, I touch and agree with you. Um, uh, Effie, I touch and agree with you for healing and unity in America. And normally I do pray for um, America and the world. And so let's make that our constant prayer. Yes, indeedy. We need prayer because this is not going to happen just by osmosis or us saying how you do. Okay. <laughs> this is going to happen by prayer and some things come about by prayer and fasting. And so we're going to have to pray just like we prayed during the election, just like we prayed for everything. I've been praying for all of our world leaders, all of them. You know, we've been blessed. Um, Effie is uh, listening to us via Canada. And we uh, have been blessed, um, the Wise Courtship Movement, to really make friends all over the world, all over the world. And I believe we are all family. And if I if I suffer, you ought to suffer. And if I if you triumph, I ought to be triumphing. We should all be celebrating. And you know, the Bible says, you know, if someone's mourning, we need to mourn with them. If they're celebrating, we need to celebrate with them. And I'm not going to be satisfied until we all are doing well and we all can connect into God's blessings. And so listen, I encourage you. I know that we've had uh, a really, really rough year, guys, and a lot of things have been going on. But as we talk today, who is really in control? God is still on his throne. I say this at the end of my broadcast all the time. God is still in control. And you could pray and pray and pray. And you're like, Lord, he is not moving. He is not listening. But God is moving and he is listening and he's going to do it his way. Somebody say his way. <laughs> he's going to do it his way. And his way is the best way. And his way is the right way. And his way is the just way. And when you see his way and you see the way God is going and moving, you are going to be so happy and happy indeed. Because God does, he does, uh, he can do anything but fail. Well, I got to go because we our time has really, really shot by there. Um, but you can visit me on the web at www.wisecourtship.com. I'm on social media just about everywhere as Wise Courtship or Tony Henderson Mayers. All you have to do is Google me. Just know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And in this day and, a, day and age of alternative facts, things spinning way out of control, God is still in control. He still sits on his throne. And until Jesus comes back, that's right. We got to learn to watch, fight, and pray. Take care. Well, hello there, each and every one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell. Click it for me so that you will know anytime I upload a new video. <laughs>